ankle. Yeah. Very important for ankle. You've come, you've done well to come straight off it and straight into this, because I'm sure know. it's... And I've got a migraine, had, or <coughs> I have the remnants of a migraine headache. So I'm even going into the call, I was just like... Oh. It's so interesting, though, because <clears throat> I gave Mark a homeopathic remedy for his headache. And it, it, homeopathy is so interesting. You don't just, there's not just one tablet for a headache. There's multiple, 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 but yeah. usually Mark will say something exactly that the particular remedy says. <laughs> like you woke up at three o'clock in the morning, lying down was worse. You couldn't, it, it, anyway. So Do you think it was the bowel bone that did it? I, I, no, I've infl- I, I rang I'm Dina. Inflated. I rang Dina and I gave you symptoms. I said, I think it's this remedy. And she said, so do I. She goes, he, she goes that's a mental stress working really, really hard. And she said, and also because you had so much wheat, the two things together, and when your stomach was bad from wheat, it was the same remedy. So it's so the idea. mental stress working hard or mental stress from working hard? The mental stress plus hit in with all the wheat that you had yesterday. Right. Because I made some right. uh, cinnamon rolls. Wow. And he, 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 we got back all from of this, I didn't even know town going on and he'd had six bow buns and then he came in and had... Two cinnamon rolls, and I'll say, well, I haven't had, you're going to pay a price for that. I have, look, I feel no, you like don't. bloated. You don't bloated up like a, my head feels bloated. <laughs> no, you my head feels bloated. Does anyone else, you get that sort of head where you, does anyone wake up it's with a funny, swollen It's funny though, isn't head? it? You can eat a load of carbs because we're all been, you know, fed this stuff about carbs. And you can eat some carbs and like, you can literally go in a half an hour, like, oh, my face feels swollen, which of course it won't be. But it's just the psychology of it. Mm. We're all so fucked up about Inflammation, Lorna, because my head is inflamed. Inflammation! My head is inflamed. It's the root of all disease, my hair. Yes, okay. Nicola Sturgeon has resigned. I'm, I'm, I'm going to share this because it was a genuine response. I was flicking through my phone and I thought it was the Crankies and it was Nicola Sturgeon. I, I mean, she... You know, I, sorry, I literally thought, what's this story about the crankies? And then suddenly I realized, oh, it's Nicola Sturge. I mean, there's just such a resemblance with well, her Well, I think hair. it's because her hairstyle is yeah. very similar. Yeah, yeah, it is. But, um, yeah, but so there is no statement that? yet. Yeah, let me so ask. apparently there's a statement at 11. So nobody leave us at 11, stay with us. Are you, because we've got a lot of Scottish followers, are yeah. you happy Sturgeon has... Has she resigned or isn't going to re-stand? No, she has resigned. Has resigned. So does that mean she goes straight away? I don't know. I mean, I was just saying, when you think of Nicola Sturgeon, you think of a a terrier that wouldn't let go of anything. Yeah, I'm amazed. So I am am really shocked out of all the politicians that we've got. If you'd said... Choose one that's most... You would never think of Nicola Sturgeon, would you? No, I'd have thought never. she'd like a terrier. So it makes me wonder Like a if, Scottish terrier. It makes me wonder if there's something really else going on. Like what? I don't know. I don't well, know. Why would, she, why would she resign? Well, we never know what's going on in people's private lives, do we? There could be something that we know nothing about, but we will find out. <laughs> look, the one thing you do know about people's private lives is... There's lots we don't know about because they're private. Yay! Yeah, private. I um, suppose it's because we share so much of our private life. Swollen head syndrome, someone says. But if That's only exactly you knew all the stuff we didn't share. Jane, yeah, the total carnage. Jane Bentley's swollen head and the rows we have just before we go on air. Um, Jane Bentley's swollen head syndrome. That's it. That's it. He's got swollen head syndrome. Yeah. Helen Durkin, my 16-year-old son is devastated about Nicola Sturgeon resigning. His generation thinks she would deliver on independence, Helen Durkin. Well, of course. I mean, people are going to be devastated, aren't they? Those that want independence and those that don't will be very happy, I suppose. I I personally think Nicola Sturgeon is going to have a long and successful career in comedy. (laughs) Well, let's see. Um, (laughs) So, so I don't think I've ever seen her smile. But um, So, today, we are going to be talking about upstaging at weddings. Oh, man. And we've got a good story on that. Um, we're going to be talking oh, yeah. about jealousy. God, do we know about that? Now, we're not going to talk about <coughs> Mark's jealousy. <laughs> yeah, because why he, not? he said, right, because oh, I can't talk about my jealousy. Got such but a bad we head. want to hear about your jealousy. And maybe we're going to impart a bit of advice for dealing either with a jealous partner or your own jealousy. Also, um, Mark found a really interesting article a couple of days ago. And We didn't really want to do it on Valentine's. It didn't feel right. But it's about the impact on young boys. Can I I just give it some context? This was actually written a few days before the uh, drama on Channel 4 came out, Consent. Mm. And what drew me into this article, which we'll talk about in a bit, is 
I think we ha we do on all, a lot of these lives. We've talked an awful lot about the fact that, you know, we don't need to talk about good men because we know that there are good men and it's da 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 and all that kind of stuff. This is a really, not counterintuitive, but it, I think it's going to prove challenging what it's saying to people who feel that we are only in the foothills of sorting shit out for women. But it's important to deal with what this article says, I think, because we can't... Well, let's go straight yeah, into this Yeah, article. okay, well, this, this, this article <coughs> uh, called... Uh, why it, The title of it is Why Me Too Fallout is Wrecking the Lives of Schoolboys. Now, I don't like that headline because this will be... That, to me, is plays into this whole thing of Me Too is over the top, Me Too is... I don't like that. But I like what the article is about, which is that the consideration that for some boys... There has been a really bad. Well, let me give it give it some put on some meat on the bones. So, yeah. a psychotherapist, Julie Lynn Evans, has said that yes, and this is all couched within the terms of it's crucially important that everyone's invited. Hashtag Me Too. That they have all happened, and yeah. that they continue to happen, and that there continues to be safe places for women and girls to be able to go to and report that. But what she's talking about is. Not even something that's questionable. This is a definite byproduct of this. And I suppose the question for this is, as a father of daughters, you can see which side of the equation I am more firmly sat. But she says that things now regarding, certainly in schools, but women and young women talking about harassment in schools is what she describes as leading to a dangerous backlash amongst boys, which could account for some of the Andrew Potato Head uh, ob obsession, I refuse to say his proper name. Um, and so she, she, she talks about the fact that, um, whereas in lockdown, most of her clients were teenage girls with eating disorders, self-harming and all that. She said that now most of her clients are exclusively boys who've been ostracized, punished or expelled for behavior that she describes potentially as little more than clumsy teenage fumbling. And I think that paragraph has so much in yeah. it that's complicated. <clears throat> and just to <clears throat> go back to what you just said there, you said, now, being the father of daughters, I'm clearly on, you know, on one... Well, my, my first port of call. Port, exactly. Yeah. And the thing about this article is, of course, this is very important for both boys and girls because I think a lot of young people are really confused Mm. now about what's okay and what's not okay. Mm. A lot of young people are desensitised to things that are definitely not okay. Um, <clears throat> and as Mark says, it's just the whole thing is just so bloody complicated. But that doesn't mean we should shy away from any... Because when I first saw this, I thought, oh, God, can we even deal with this? Because mm. we are dealing all the time with strengthening our girls and helping them understand that it's that you always, you know, to always try and speak up and all of this. And yet this did break my heart because mm. I also know I've heard of situations via the young people we know where a frenzy has been whipped up mm. in groups of girls and then stuff has been shared around in social media. And I think this often does come from real fear from girls. They're, fact, they're terrified. Mm. They are absolutely terrified. And there is collat collateral damage now clearly, for boys. And I, I too, Mark, that we haven't really spoken about the article, but the teenage fumbling, where is, how do we explain that to mm. our children mm -hmm. as being okay when we're also trying to explain what's not okay? Mm. It's so complicated. We'll do all the happy birthdays at the end. I'll make a, I'll make a note in a moment. So complicated. Um, Andrea Crash, I hope you're okay in New Zealand. Oh, God, yes. Yeah, no, absolutely. We love. heard that, yes, yeah. just got worse and worse over yes. there, isn't it? Sending all of our, all of our love, Andrea. And to anyone else, I know we've got other people from New Zealand, from New Zealand too. Zealand, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, the part of this that, that kind of flagged up for me was I thought this really made me think about things from the perspective of being a, a parent of a boy um, and just a normal boy. You know, imagine being the parent of a, a normal boy, boy brought up in a good home, you a know, nice whatever. Boy. I mean, I hate using those words because what, what is a good home? I don't know, I'm but fine I mean, saying the good boy. One person's good, another. Anyway, but you know, and a normalish boy, because he's normal, um, goes to a party and We've talked, when we all sit around the table and we talk about dating, we talk about our first experiences, we talk about things like fumbling, about, mm. oh, what's the knack for flipping flipping a bra, bra off, off, putting your hand around someone in we a, used in a to, cinema. Me, me and my sister used to used to safety pin our shirt to our knickers so that boys couldn't have WHT, wandering hand trouble. Oh, we said, oh, we can have wandering, oh, there'll be WHT. Yeah. And, and, and 
And we didn't like it. I mean, the thing is, we didn't like it. But those boys were just trying to work out what they could do. Mm. I would call that absolutely teenage fumbling. And 100%. so, so I, I want to know what you think, guys. Do you think potentially this can be exploited and that we have a lot of male victims falling into this, this trap? Uh, the article also talks about uh, uh, there's an app called Whisper, which allows people to report sexual and bullying incidents anonymously. Some uh, of those who've been reported as suicidal, uh, and she says that the healthy sexual development of both boys and girls is at risk. And I think this really goes to the heart of a huge problem with being a young, a young boy or a young girl. Opening up to sexual, you know, uh, having a sexual awakening, moving into sexual kind of relationships, testing the boundaries. Are we getting to a, are we getting to a place where testing those boundaries can't happen? And are we also getting to a place where potentially a genuine fumbling mistake can become weaponized into something so much bigger that ends up in, as she says here, many, many boys having to leave schools or not return to school. She's got three clients that are now homeschooled because of the, uh, basically, the abuse that they've received yeah. from school. Uh, nothing has been proven. And even, yeah, you know, even and if it, they're investigated. Yeah, yeah. So uh, they, we don't have any answers for this, yeah. but it's something we want to keep thinking about and talking about because how do we draw the line when we're explaining to our daughters what's okay and not okay? Because where does the fumble come What in? do you think, guys? You know, can, I mean, can but, you fumble with innocence as a young teenage boy? Can you and anymore? Girl. Yeah. I mean, the other thing is, it, with with consent, I don't know how many of you watched it, we did a review of it. What, what made us so sad was both our girls weren't the least bit shocked by one bit of it. Mm. And, you know, they and some of their friends said that they know other girls who, like, will be in a, you know, in the midst of something and uh, the boy will just get out a phone and, and photograph them or film them so that they've got evidence for their friends. Now, again, I'm talking about it from the girl's point of view and how horrible that is, but that boy has already been put on, has also been put under pressure to get evidence for his friends. And so that boy is also not having a sexual awakening and all that, all that lovely, like, scary, mm. normal feelings when you're just trying to put under pressure, you know, get in, we want do the business, get us a photograph. And I just feel so sorry for all of them. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I really, really do. And then we've got this fucking potato head and People many are others asking, like her. what we mean by potato head. I think you're just going to have to... We can't say. We don't want to, We refuse we to say his name. We refuse to say his name. Particularly unpleasant male. Very, lots of videos put out by him. But, um, and, and many others like him. It's not just him. And, and our young men are being confused even further about what's okay and what's not so i think one of the yeah. things about this that's really tricky is that is that you know trolling um harassing um yes, you know, Jane, accusing all this kind of stuff can happen on both sides of the equation and i think you know it doesn't take a genius does it to work out that um you know potentially say in us in you know and schools aren't friendly places for youngsters mm. they were just going to say it you know regardless of the great job teachers are doing schools are not pleasant places for huge numbers of kids. Really, mm. it's just a fact. And one, one, one of the things that happens in, 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 in these schools, obviously, is people want to go out with someone, someone doesn't want to go out with them, they've gone to a party, they kiss their best friend, it wasn't their friend, da 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 And it's not beyond the bounds of reason for, say, a young girl to want to suggest something that was very innocent, wasn't very innocent, to get back at someone, um, as much as all the... More, there's, there's the obviously toxic masculine behaviour, but then there's all the other behaviour. And what's interesting is, is that this woman's saying that um, things... Uh, where is it? Things like... Um, but also, Mark, there is, um, the, there is the thing of confusion for that girl, isn't yes, it? Yes, like, yeah, yeah, You absolutely. know how often... Uh, if you... Fa like, it's like, I have these conversations with my daughters and they'll be talking about a certain point and I go, well, he fantasies you. And they go, oh, no, he doesn't. Oh, God, no, he's just like my brother. Or, and, I th and I think, you have no idea... Because you feel that way about them. You have no idea, because I know, I can tell from what they're telling me that the person... But they're literally oblivious that this person fancies them. Mm. Oblivious. And then that person could possibly make a move. And then this girl who's been taught that when you don't want a move made on you, that's a, like a bad mm. situation and you say no. Yeah, that's a very good point. Then, then as a mum, I'm working out how do I... <laughs> but the only answer here is actually is conversation with your children. 
mums and dads, or just if you're a single parent, you've got to have both conversations. You've got to keep, each time these things come up in the news, you have that conversation with your kid. You know, like that consent is such a brilliant program. Well, she says, she says, the, everyone's, invite, everyone's invited and hashtag me too. <coughs> Like a therapist says, are a tremendous force for good, and I think we'd agree. But it's also often a double-edged sword, which has released tremendous difficulty for a lot of boys. She then talks about a particular boy who wasn't found guilty of having done done anything, but he had to go through the process of being suspended. Uh, you know, um, what's the word? Investigated in a sense, not not by the police, but by the authority, uh, the school authorities. And she describes this boy as being back in school, but not trusting people and unable to trust girls. Mm. And as a result, is feeling scared about going to university. Um, I have, and she says, I have no idea after this what a normal teen teenager does or what a normal teenager is. That no, those are his words. And so Jesus. you can and then his mother said at one point he asked us if we would visit him if he went to prison and would his room have a mm. window we mm. all cried so you know there, there, so there are kids having there are boys having a really tough time and I, it just made me think have we I mean, I want to I'm read a few of your comments because, look, Sophie, Steph for mine for uk says, I fear for young boys the dangerous notion that the accused is guilty without evidence or fact. Names openly printed before charged. We need to be balanced, but not to discourage girls coming forward. Exactly. Put it better. That's, 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 that's exactly our act, problem, isn't it? Marjorie Mar <coughs> Dudon, uh, you're so right. Kids are confused of what is right and wrong. Both yeah. boys and girls need guidance and understanding. I mean, I suspect girls and boys more need often, to be protected and respected. What we mustn't slip into is girls are just telling lies about boys. Oh, absolutely. I think it's much more that girls, of course, there will be that. I think it's that girls will be confused because more often than not, a boy will fancy that, that way round, because girls just mature quicker, don't they? Yeah. Than a girl fancies them. And they're getting all these mixed messages, boys, on how toxic masculinity and how you have to go for a girl and you have to be confident and you give them the ick if you're a bit wimpy or if you're a bit this or it's a bit that. I mean, it's so bloody confusing for them. And then they make a move and then a girl is, is like hyped up because everybody is, is, is saying, that we mustn't take this anymore and da 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 and if you're uncomfortable. Yeah. And then they could easily say, he touched me and I didn't want him to. Or, you know, and, and then that can, what's the play that we love? The, um, with the whispers with all the teenage girls. Crucible. The crucible. It's, it's almost like a crucible situation goes yeah. around. And the fact that this is called Whisper, this app, yeah. it's like Whisper. whispers. Yeah. Creator yeah. Hollock, remember when Roxanne Pallet accused her fellow housemate, Ryan Thomas, of assault? That was awful. If it hadn't happened on camera, he wouldn't have been believed. So did, I, I don't remember the case, but no, the, presumably no. there was footage, of course, um, to pro prove otherwise. But you see, the thing is, you can feel assaulted, can't you? But this is That's the, the other thing. But, but, uh, but going back to... I mean, let's go, but hang on, let's mm. just go back to a really difficult... I remember innocently sitting with my first girlfriend, who became my first girlfriend on one of our first dates, putting my arm around the top because all the boys said, oh, you go to the cinema and da-da-da. Well, my, now the boys tell you a lot more than yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, and, and my arm was trying to reach all the way around and I was getting more Were and more... Were you trying to get a boot? Yeah, I didn't know what I was trying to get. Well, did you just want to put your hand on? I mean, yeah, it's just I like, this so. is the next um, bit. I, why not? I just didn't know. I thought that's what you're supposed to yeah, do. Yeah, exactly. And there was, you know, we went out for four years. There was no sort of predatory aspect to it, but... As a father now, if I was to hear that was happening to any of my girls, I would, I would go mad. It's so it? weird. It's where you're standing. Christos says, lack of education within the family, the normalisation of such attitudes at one's um, uh, palm, palm, social, media oh, yeah, social media platforms, video games, etc., sadly lead to such attitudes, actions. It's an abyss. It is it, an abyss. It is. And then the other thing you've got is this horrific situation with pornography. So boys, yet again, are so confused. And girls, because, you know... Yeah, the pressure is there on, for women to... It's put perform, on at parties, yeah. it's put on at sleepovers, it's put on everywhere. If, you, if any of you think that your kids are not seeing pornography on those little handsets, then yeah. God help you, because you need to be informed about this and you need to be awake that they will have. So... Um, Sheila Roberts makes a good point. We need to arm our girls with you can also express your feelings. I've said to my son, think. Even if putting an arm around a girl, think about it. Just think about it. Don't just assume. It does require parents of boys, I think, to 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 impart the yeah the clarity of that information. Moment yesterday on Love Island, who was it? Said, can I kiss you? Oh, it was with Olivia. 
And that boy said, can I kiss you? Oh, yeah, him. And you yeah. could see that the moment was there. And I thought, oh, is that a generational shift mm. now? They were both looking at each other's eyes. There was that pause just before when both know and they know it's going to happen in that lovely moment. I love that moment. Mm. And then he went, can I kiss you? And she went, yes. And I thought, ooh, mm. that was really nice. Mm. <laughs> and I thought, I wonder if more and more people are, are doing that now. Because they can still be a frisson with that. But when mm. you're 14, when you're 12, 13. Yeah. You don't have this sophistication. You know? And Murray asking, why did you think that was the right thing to do, Mark? Well, I slightly feel like you're telling me. <laughs> um, because because the, it was the 19, yeah. it was 1984. There was um, zero political understanding. I would have gone and, then and, and expected a boy to do that in the cinema. You'd go to the absolutely. cinema and a boy would do yeah, this. Yeah. I never and got, you'd either go, yeah. or you'd go. I can see this now being turned into Mark Molest. <laughs> no, no, um, you know, it was, it was, to, my, to our generation and to that era and to Jane, my dear, dear girlfriend who I was in love with for four years, we would look at that as a moment of kind of, oh, isn't that sweet? Yeah, to exactly. be honest with you, she sent me porn mags for my first Valentine. <laughs> so that completely screwed my brain up. So I didn't know what was going on. But if I was to absolutely isolate the, the one thing that made me do it, it was the belief from somewhere, that probably that's what from films, all those yeah, sort of American films, say. Greece. That was what I was, was that's where I got it. Greece, that's where I got it from. There you go, blame Greece, it's John Travolta's And work. that's where I got it from, was that, yeah. was that, um, that she might have just been asking that just generally. Or no, I you know. Think you got that from? No, I know, but sometimes <laughs> it could get a bit. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, I, I think I got that from movies, that if you went to the cinema and your boyfriend didn't do this... Get off me. There was something you weren't going to be boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah, 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 that's so, weird. So I think it's really interesting. It's like our influences were so few mm, yeah. on what was the sexual yeah, yeah. moves. Their influences now are worldwide. Yeah, yeah. You know, every kind of video, every kind of position, every kind of girl, every kind of everything is available. And in that, that thing and scent... Uh, that drama, you see that, just what Jane you Bentley, Jane Bentley going to first base, all those sort of phrases, all those sorts of things. You're absolutely right. I mean, I've said this before, I remember one boy bringing in a page of porn from a magazine, it was like some reader's wives thing, and that one page, it was one I page, saying this. that one page came into the tutor, into our tutor group, and we was going, let's have a look, let's have a look. It wasn't hardcore, it was just like a woman doing whatever. Let's have a look, we all had a look. This is no exaggeration. By the end of the school day, that piece of paper was still folded and intact on a wall on the way out of the school. Everyone had it, having had a look at it. Do you know that what? That was it. That was the school's experience for the day year. Again. Mm. <laughs> oh, I just want to put my arms around all the parents of all the daughters and all the sons, and I want to put arms around all the daughters and all the sons because they're fucking hard. Mm. But the only thing we've got is to communicate and to not judge. When our kids come to talk to us, I tears that we talk to them, we listen to them, we don't react, we don't go crazy. We just say, well, that sounds, well, that sounds a lot. Mm. That's, that sounds, wow, how are, you, how are you dealing with that? And you're opening and, and bringing back, not like, you will not, anything like that, they're gonna shut down. And I think the most dangerous thing in our society is when our children, stop talking to the people that really care about them mm. and can inform them in a caring and constructive way rather than the people, the other people that might... Precisely, to. precisely, precisely. Tess um, has become a family member. Yeah, I think, oh. I think you were before. I think you were before. You've just come back. Oh, you've come nice. back. How lovely. Um, we'll, we'll sing you a comeback song. Yeah, comeback song. Um, so, uh, being upstaged at your wedding or where jealousy can... The jealousy story comes from a woman who... This is quite a dramatic story. Let's leave the wedding story to the end in case okay. people don't want the fluff. That's just going to be our bit of fun and Oh, OK. Silly. Well, UK... This come, Nadia mentioned this off the back of UK's longest... This, this slightly worried me. She said, UK's longest-serving female prisoner who killed love rival may be released after 35 years. She immediately looked up at me and said, shall we discuss jealousy? <laughs> <laughs> well, no. I mean, this is a terribly, no, terribly sad story. For everyone involved, so she was, this, this woman is dubbed Britain's forgotten prisoner. She brutally stabbed, don't you just love the newspapers, her love Sorry. rival to death in an act of hate and jealousy. 35 years ago, um, Maria Pearce, Pearson, now uh, 66, murdered her ex-partner's new girlfriend in the street in Hartlepool. Um, and she stabbed her 17 times. Um, at the time, she was 31, uh, the, the person who murdered uh, the murderer, 
and was sold, told she would serve a minimum of 12 years. Imagine what that felt like for that family at that time. I know. That she was going to get 12 years I know. I know. for stabbing their loved so one. So she stabbed, times. just to clarify, she stabbed the girlfriend of her ex-partner? Yes. Out of, in a fit of jealousy? Yeah, so she had stalked um, Janet Newton, who was the one who was murdered, and then shouted at her before taking a knife out and stabbing her 17 times. Just horrific. She was just left in a pool of blood. She actually stabbed right into her heart. I mean, just brutal. And I, you know, if we'd been doing coffee moaning 35 years ago, we would have said, how come she gets 12 years? Mm. But she's saying but 35. But she's been 35 years. They call her the forgotten prisoner. Oh. Because um, she should have been out by now. Um, but um, they do set, you know, I mean, she, maybe she wasn't, wasn't satisfying the parole board. What a curious detail the Daily Mail have put in, in, in here. Maria is the prison system forgotten inmate when jailed. Three men and a baby was the biggest movie of the year. Well, they're just Hansley trying to place like, oh, know, how long ago it was. They okay, always do that. So, what, so what's the, so um, the story here is, is, is the, the levels to which jealousy can take you. I mean, isn't there a, a law? She served the same time as Myra Hindley so far, just a year off. I mean, there's lots of different things here. Women always serve longer than men. Why? Um, uh, it just astounds me. Um, but... Yes, yeah, so she was. So this was a fit of jealous rage. It was described. Can, so, can sorry. I just ask: Is there a law in France? Isn't there a law which is called a crime of passion? Yes, there is. That allows you to kind of. It's no, a sort it doesn't of, it's a allow form, you. No, no, it doesn't allow you, but it's a form of defence to mitigate and minimise yeah. uh, the punishment that you're going to get. Is yeah, that there right? is. There is. It's called the. Uh, oh, I used to know it in French. What is it? Does anyone know it in French? Um, <coughs> Tez, why do they serve longer? It's really odd. It's, re it's really yeah, odd. Yeah, we should do that one day. It's almost it's like there's an assumption that because you're a mo your potential mm. mother or a mother, that you should have a sort of yeah. ownership of a moral compass that's more meaningful than a man. What exactly. Bunk them. Exactly. So <coughs> I just thought parking that tragic story for all those concerned, I mean, we don't know anything about her. I wonder if she was... <coughs> A yeah. decent person. Well, Mrs. That Sadie says lose. that's quite the jealous fit, though, 17 times. Yeah. Was she? <clears throat> was she what, what was going on for her? We have no idea. All sorts of things. I mean, sometimes... You know when somebody does something to you just, that's just so awful and you can feel such rage, can't you? You can feel such unbelievable rage. Mm. And, and you can feel so... Um, muted sometimes can't you by injustice of another that sometimes for a split second you can almost understand how some people push to the very edge and I'm, of course i'm parking this case i'm not talking about this case because i don't know the details of these people i i have sometimes in my life gone god i can understand how people end up murdering people because you just can feel so locked in and often this has happened i felt this when i've seen the injustice happening to somebody else that i love and i'm like Oh my God, how can this person do that? So a crime de passion, you know, like a person is out of their character and does something completely out of their character because they just, they just see whatever and they go, the, the red mist comes in. Um, so that's the most extreme end of jealousy. But jealousy is like such a huge problem for so many people on an absolutely daily, absolute daily basis. And Mark has talked in the past very openly, and I think really bravely, bravely actually, because um, it's, it's our homeopath that said, wasn't it, that you're the only person that she's ever treated that has actually admitted to jealousy. Well, she, well, yeah, well, she did actually, yeah. But she yeah. also she also said that it's one of it's those so it's one rare. of those emotions that people fight hard to deny. You know, I mean, because so it's because it's just it's so painful because to say that you feel jealous is to say that you feel vulnerable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, no, and but that's, also... We, we, it's a scary thing to say we're vulnerable to another person. Yeah. I think. I think that's one of the reasons. Yeah. Isn't it? I mean, my thing with jealousy is... <coughs> I'm very, very proud. So I don't want to show that... I don't think it's a weakness, but I don't want to show the... My vulnerability. Because I feel if I show my vulnerability then I'm going to get hurt. So I don't, so I'm very proud. Like if somebody were to make, try and make me jealous, 
I would finish with them because I'm not going to go down that road. Yeah. And I never, ever have tried to make you feel jealous. You no. felt jealous sometimes, but I never played that game with you because no. I think it's horrible. In, no. in, in the beginning, we, do, we all do, don't we? A couple of things. My little peonies, there's still a big step between a jealous rage and stabbing someone to death. Thanks, Tess. It, I have asked a tricky exactly. question. A tricky question, you can answer it anonymously because they're all anonymous. Can you in any way see yourself seeing red and doing something you regret? Uh, so just uh, to plop your answers there. So obviously now, that's the most extreme yeah, yeah, yeah. end, but, but we're just talking but, about you know, where you it never can know. take you. You might have had an experience where you were taken right to the edge due to yeah. someone being abusive. I mean, it could be something like, I don't know, daubing somebody's car or, you know, it's like, what is your thing that mm. is too far? But going back to this idea of people often struggle to accept, I think accepting jealousy is to accept a weakness in yourself or a potential darkness in yourself. But also, I think the reason a lot of people um, refuse to acknowledge jealousy, and I'm thinking of people here who harass online, trolls, all that kind of stuff, fundamentally baked into their condition is jealousy. And that, and that jealousy is never going to be something they admit. It's going to be something they strive to kind of deny because jealousy can fuel so many people's self-identification. You know, I can think of uh, a couple of people who... Because of their jealousy, their jealousy has taken them to a place of sitting so outside of things, being so sort of corroded with evil and nastiness and horrible intentions, that when they, where they're at, the jealousy has created that. But to admit jealousy is to admit that that's the thing that defines you, that you've become what you've become you based on really corrosive, self-damaging, damaging of others kind of things. You, you know, what, what in the end happens is, no, this is me. I am what I am. How dare you say I'm jealous? Jealousy isn't part of the equation because there's a sort of taboo around it. And I think jealousy morphs into such corrosive behavior but corrosive behavior that defines a person so that you can't even get the advantage on yourself to look back and go that's jealousy the only thing i think that allowed me to be able to turn around on it a little bit was the sobriety and um and and, and the long-term sobriety in a sense of constantly working therapy blah, blah. you know it's hard it's hard to admit that you've you've been a jealous person i think it's very hard well i think probably the problem is like maybe that label in itself is not good i'm a jealous person you say jealousy is one of the emotions that any human being can have, yeah. isn't it? It's like, I'm a jealous person, it's so final, there's something so final about that. Sometimes I can feel really jealous mm -hmm. is probably a good start. But I think admitting that you feel it is a good beginning to healing it. Mm -hmm. Because if you've ever been in a relationship with somebody that's jealous and they just will not admit it, it's a brick bloody wall isn't it mm. it is just the most frustrating thing because you know it's never going to get better because it's like being an alcoholic or a or, or any kind of addict if they it's don't addictive. admit it how can you even begin to yeah. to, to, to change things? and it is addictive jealousy is addictive because and I think we've talked about it that. releases adrenaline and cortisol mm. which fire you up i mean mm. well that's why they call it a jealous rage you know um the pups don't lie. Also, let's be honest, some dynamics of relationships fuel the feeling of jealousy exactly. and perhaps suggest something being played out. Megan Parker, I feel like jealousy is just insecurities and making stories up in your own head. And all it does is harm yourself. Marjorie Dudon, I used to feel jealous, but I try to focus on the good things that I have. No one else have. Mm. Jealousy can damage you in so many ways. Gloria Chesham, when you find someone has cheated with your man, it's so painful you could do anything to the other woman. It's a red yeah. rage and extremely painful to the core. Exactly, because it's, because it's, yeah, I mean, it's a physical pain. It's a mental anguish. There's such a feeling of helplessness and hopelessness, isn't there? So... Mm. Yeah, mm. it's, it's, it's a very human emotion, jealousy, but, but you know, and, and like over the years when our, you know, our girls have come and said, oh, I'm feeling this way. Mm. I don't know what it is, but this girl, you know, and I'm feeling da da da. And we've always said, that is so amazing that you're noticing that you're feeling that and that you're talking about it. Mm. Because what you're saying to us is, it doesn't feel good and I don't know what to do about it. And then we'll give them like suggestions on how to do it. So even with your young children, you can start talking about it. Mm. Because, because I think 
the shame around jealousy is what keeps people locked into it. Yeah, a bit no, again agree. like addiction, Mark, yeah, isn't no, that's it? What I'm they say to get rid of that but shame. I think, but I think what happens is a total con with yourself when it get when it gets particularly corrosive that it actually begins to define you. And because it defines yeah. you, you can't get round it to think yeah. so you don't think you're jealous. This is just what I'm feeling. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. just what I am. And if I let go of this and yeah. say it's not jealousy, and I, and I then think, I'm more And I think that's a classic example yeah. of the kind of people who were pulling down the likes of Caroline Flack, trolls and all that lot. They've got jealousy has encased them so mm. much that they would just scoff and laugh at the idea that they're oh, jealous. I think you know. every single troll is jealous or, or is unhappy with their life. Mm. Definitely, definitely. I really do think that. And, and, and are just locked into that, like you say, that, that place of it's shame. Like, yeah, it's like, they're like an almond, or, an almond. Or, or a macadamia nut, though they're quite nice, aren't they? Uh, um, Raspberry Mojito Girl, thank you so much. You're very kind. You've gifted 10 memberships Aww, to people. Oh, that's so Which, of course, kind. that's so sweet. Which has led to someone else saying, what do you get? You get a, a one to one and a half hour magazine, cookery, uh, book, cultural, shopping, uh, funny memes <laughs> show. So me and every Dean, sun, Hang on, yeah. every Sunday you get, so you get all of these aspects in a show. And we haven't been on top of the members' lives as frequently as we'd wanted to be. There is a members' live happening this Friday evening with Nanny Dye. Where we give out the cards. So yeah. on this show, it's like, so either me, Nanny Dye, or Mark read a book and then review it. I have to say Nanny Dye does most of it because we're always behind. And then Dean and I go out and do shopping in supermarkets. Which is great. It's, it's lovely. Sometimes we have Lisa Loves. She's showing yeah, us new Lisa products Love. by, um, by indie, indie shops. And yeah, businesses. and sometimes we have Lee who makes a cocktail. Yeah, and those are hilarious. Lot, and then I do, obviously we do cooking on the main channel, we do Meals in Minutes, we do the Curly Cooks, but on the Sunday show, and this is going to become more and more like this, we do two recipes, but they're the more languid. Yeah, and they're, they're, they're sort of prettier to film. And yeah, they're, they're sort of more Mark indulgent. Shoots, they're more indulgent. Mark shoots it all on like a TV broadcast camera, so they're more, it, it's more like, it's a bit more like Nigella. It's more programming. This week I've made some amazing cinnamon buns so yeah so you get all of that and that's one pound 99 a month and as i say members lives which we're, we're hitting probably one every two weeks it, and and we're going we're to get on top of that and members live as i say members live is going to be happening this friday the last one with you and dina went down an absolute storm so i think you and dina need to do another one me and annie die are going to do one this friday evening. and we give out cards and, you, signed and, you cards. Cards. and also the image of the day we have some card winners for that too which i'm quite enjoying i, I pop Pop an image, which is a yeah, so good. and then and then I say best comment or best strap line, you win a card, and I think we've had three or four winners anyway. So, so you know, little, little perks and bits and bobs on but, the side. You know, there's plenty on the main channel as well, and yeah. you know, we've always said we will always keep that membership area at one ninety nine. Yeah. Various people have said to us we're completely fucking mad, but we always wanted to make that really affordable mm. uh, for people. So you know, just under 50 fifty p a week. For extra content. I, so, think we're, I think we're out of time. I think we're going to uh, we're gonna have to keep upstaging your wedding for tomorrow. But what if people came for the wedding Go on story? then. Can you do it quickly? So this is a story that Mark up? found. Um, and we just wanted to know... Well, I saw this and I went, I've got to do this on Loose Women. <laughs> well, this is a Loose Women topic. Woman says mother-in-law wore near identical bridal gown to her wedding. Terrible. It's interesting, isn't it? That what she says poll. there is, I couldn't have been more embarrassed. Embarrassed? Have you got a photo of it? Uh, I'm just trying to find... Uh, yeah, they, oh, there's her oh mum. Well, God. she's popped a clown's face on her mum's head. Oh, my God. Mother-in-law shows up to our wedding wearing a literal wedding gown. There's a photo here. Go to the independent newspaper. I haven't actually seen the photo. And pump in, woman says mother-in-law wore a near-identical bridal gown to her wedding. And you've got, there's a weird, it's a curious photo. I presume it's the bride taking a poke at her mum-in-law, isn't it? Well, I tell you what, that's not going to be good for her marriage. No. She shouldn't have put that on TikTok. It's basically her mum stood next to her groom, her, her husband, uh, and her mum has got, they've put a sort of emoji of a clown's head over her mum's face. Now, you see, what I would have done, though, thank God, can you Imitation as a form of flattery, says Helen Parker. Yeah, uh, what I would have done with that is I would not have said a word. Not to my husband, obviously I would to have my girlfriends and my own family, but I wouldn't have said a word about it because... The very act of what she did was enough. Everybody would have seen it. But I think either the person is just like so tone deaf, it's unbelievable mm. to be able to do that, 
Or maybe she just like really was grieving about her son being... Do you think? Which is very odd. I mean, it's a full length white wedding dress. Jacqueline Clements would have accidentally spilt red wine on it. <laughs> But don't you think just her doing it was just like enough? You didn't oh, look, need to Emma do Emma Muck says, my stepmother did that. I turned up to my fitting and... I hate the way it spins up there. Sorry. Uh, Emma Muck, my stepmother did that. I turned up to my fitting and a navy wedding dress was hanging there. Everyone looked embarrassed and it turned out to be my stepmother's. Wow. What do you think the person is thinking? Tanya Gurney. Go jealousy. To the independent paper. We've gone back to jealousy, haven't we? Um... But yeah, it's funny because our, our regular viewers here will know this story, but... So yeah, we do know Nicola Sturgeon's resigned. It's, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah we'll probably do, that on, we'll do that tomorrow. But um, so uh, at our wedding, um, every, quite a lot of us I hasten came to add, to, I don't know how this happened. Quite a lot of us were at the house first. A lot of people came here first, which was quite quite nice, wasn't it? They were here uh, here on my mum's. Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So I, I had was, about three best I was then, at my mum's and you were here and you had a lot of your friends and stuff here. And then... Um, and two young daughters so I went. Too. So I went off and then got to, what was it called? It wasn't a chapel, it was a library, wasn't it? A library, how weird. And Mark turned up in his lovely car, yeah. his lovely With wedding car. With my best car, man. With his best man and his ex-girlfriend. <laughs> now look, the, this was a last, I was getting into the car, and when I got into the car, I turned round as we were pulling out, and there she was. And I was like, what the hell's going on here? Now... But you didn't say that. Well, we were in the car. No, no, you didn't say that to her, though. You what? wouldn't want to have made her feel bad. No, I didn't, no. No, no, I didn't say that. I thought it. I thought, oh my God, this is a bit weird. And of course, we pulled up, we pulled up, <laughs> and she got out of the car. <laughs> she got out of the car. <laughs> but, um... I, I but don't it know was how so it funny because everybody was saying to me, oh my God, Mark's ex was in the car. And I was like, it was funny because do you know what? I wasn't annoyed because to be one bit. No, let me just say, I wasn't annoyed one bit because I know, though he doesn't really know how it happened, I know it wouldn't have happened in any sort of bad way. No, no and in fact, it was within the it, it was within the context of Classic Mark, my very no, no, no. My very young daughter was coming to the wedding, and it was you know. So there was an aspect of wanting to be close to a bridesmaid as well. But you're right, getting in the car. But the bridesmaid was with me. She I wasn't know. With you. I know. I know. <laughs> that bit I don't understand. <laughs> I, I, I literally. I, I, I mean, I am truly. But I was Flummoxed. not angry at all. No, you it's weird. You you She's good. a lovely woman. Was she on a white horse in <laughs> Decker? But, but it was weird. I mean, okay, how would you have felt if oh, my I, ex I, I, I had would, got out of the carriage with me? I'd have been straight to... Where did we get married? Dulwich College Live. I'd have been straight down the nearest pub with all my mates going, fuck that for a game of soldiers. But you wouldn't have got married? No. <gasps> no. I never knew this. Because for me... You wouldn't have married. No, because for me, the difference was this was a parent of one of my children. It's a, it was a bit more complicated. If you had a child, it would be different. But yeah, you got out of the car with your ex. I'm out of there, mate. Interesting. It is interesting. Oh, isn't interesting, it? isn't it? Yeah. Isn't that interesting, your reason behind why it would be okay for you, but not for me? Mm. That's weird. Mm. Yeah, she was invited, Anne Murray. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and she yeah. was lovely. And it's like I said, I wasn't the she least did, bit annoyed. She didn't just turn up and get. No, no, she, she was, in fact, no, she, she was, was wearing invited. a wedding dress. And she was lovely. No, sure. And it wasn't, it wasn't, I mean, I didn't know her well at all, but, but I just knew that Mark would have just been hapless Mark going, oh. She was lovely. You know. she was and lovely. and she, she's a lovely person, yeah. but it was that just people didn't stop saying it to me all day. It was just like, well, did you know that was a bit odd? And I was like, yeah, yeah. but I was pregnant i was just so happy i was just like so on on cloud i knew mark adored me and you know it was a sunny day and i had a whole lemon meringue pie because i couldn't drink because i was pregnant so all these you do things... realize i got married to her <laughs> <laughs> but anyway there you go there you go guys. that's the first i just found out something i didn't know so have a lovely, lovely day. We're going to see you later for something on the oh, channel. Oh, happy birthday. Oh, no, happy birthday to Laura Watts. It's a happy belated birthday. Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday, to you. Happy happy birthday, birthday dear, dear Laura. Laura.
Happy birthday, birthday to you. you. Uh, welcome back to Tez. Welcome back to Tez. Tez. Welcome back to Tez. Tez. Welcome back to Tez. Tez. <laughs> Tez sent me this. Oh, really? Yeah. I love that. And Maisie, Gil Maisie Galpin, welcome. Maisie Galpin, welcome Maisie to Galpin. our family guest area. Maisie Galpin. Uh, you will get to see the most gorgeous cinnamon buns made this summer. Oh, Sunday. Cinnabobs. Cinnabobs. And Dina and I go shopping. Where did we go this time? Aldi. No, we didn't. We went to a lovely market, food market. <sighs> so excited about that. And uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. There are three bells. Press the one that says 